Hey there, I'm Cameron and welcome to StyleCraft. This is a bonus video for you. So this video uh, is what you see on screen here. It's something where I made, uh, I took advantage of repetition, which we've learned about in previous weeks. And I created this 3D box thing. I call it uh, stacking boxes. And I just want to show you guys really quickly how I made this. Um, and this, I'm going to break down a little bit differently. I'm just going to show you the project I had um, and kind of just step through it and show you how I actually created this. Instead of starting from scratch, I'm just going to kind of work backwards and show you uh, what was involved in this project. So what you're seeing here is the version I posted on Instagram. And it's just a loop. As you can see here on my timeline, this is a pre-comp that I've got set up to loop. Um, one, two, three, four, five times over the course of almost 10 seconds. Um, and I found that where it ends here was a good looping point to go back here to the beginning. So this is it, pretty simple, but it looks pretty cool. So let's go into the pre-comp. And inside the pre-comp, it's pretty simple as well. It's a Cinema 4D file with an adjustment layer and a background. So if I back up and start with just the background, the background is just solid. It's a dark green, green lime solid. And um, a lot of times I like to work with blacks that aren't 100% black. Sometimes I do work, work with 100% black or 100% white. In this case, it's um, in the green spectrum and it's very dark. But if you were to look, there's 100% black and here's my original greenish black. So. That was important because if this was 100% black, it wouldn't look as good with these solids back here, in my opinion. So I've got the background and then I've got this 3D layer that uh, if I open it up in Cinema 4D is this right here. Um, and just to jump back really quickly, you also notice that this composition is 1080 by 1080, 24 frames per second. I have been building compositions at 1080 by 1080 lately because of Instagram. And when I built this, I knew I wanted to post this to Instagram specifically, which is why I built it at 1080 by 1080. So back in cinema, this composition is also 1080 by 1080. If I click on my settings right here, you'll see that it's 1080 by 1080. It's also 24 frames per second a total length of 48 frames, which you see down here. So it's two seconds long. I also taught you that in a previous lesson, you have to also change your project settings in Cinema 4D. And the project settings are under edit project settings, and it's changed to 24 frames per second as well here. So back in After Effects, since this is 48 frames long, I kind of played around a little bit and I found that every 12 frames having this uh, animation on top of itself uh, seemed to create a perfect loop for me so this was just trial and error of i started with you know zero like if i was to like line these all up this didn't loop very well to create this kind of stacking box effect um, i could have deleted some of these layers and had like you know just three here going but I found that, uh, what is this total? One, two, three, four at a time. Looked a little bit uh, more interesting to me. So that's why these are stacked every 12 frames. Back in cinema, really simple here. All I did is I created a cube, which is under create object cube, or you can click right here and create a cube. And if I do that, You'll also see that the cube here has a fillet enabled and it has a radius of 25 and a subdivision of 25. This is kind of just personal taste. So if I turn the original off, go back to the one I just created, by default fillet is, or maybe it's fillet. I have a uh, tendency to pronounce words wrong a lot of times. So I think it is fillet actually. So if I click fillet, you can see here, that's what it looks like. But to get the dimensions right, I also did 500 by 50 by 500. So let's go back in here. It defaults to 200 by 200 by 200. So let's go 500 by 50 
by 500. There we go. So that's just a cube. Fill it turned on, it makes these kind of curved edges. It defaults to 25. Uh, I did play around with some different numbers here. I think 25 is as high as it goes maybe. Um, but 25 worked. And you'll notice when I change it from five, if you watch right in here, you'll see it smooth out just a little bit. So 25 right in here smooths out just slightly. So that worked for me as well. And I believe that was all I did with the cube. So the next thing I did was I created a new material that I dropped on this cube. Super simple, it's one material, here it is. All I did to create this material was I went to create, load material preset, broadcast materials, abstract, two sides, blue and green. There it is. So that was the material. I then um, kind of tweaked it slightly, as you can see here, here's the original one I used. And I believe what I did was, it was color and transparency here. I think I just changed the color. I changed it to more of a red, which, you know, based upon the final image, there's some color correction here. You can see the red going on. Um, but, you know, if I was to stick with the original, just straight up blue and green, that's pretty cool as well. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on interactive render region. And that's what that looks like. So that's just as cool in my opinion. Um, I've also got, uh, just to show you a simple light in the scene. So this is without the light, okay? Just if you were just to have this box, drop the material on, that's what it looks like. And it's not as interesting, right? But by adding a light that uh, creates a lot more interesting highlights and specular uh, information here and along the edge here, which makes it that much more interesting to look at. So all this is, is it is an area light, which I tend to use quite a bit of. Um, default to 100%, it's 100% white. I think these are all defaults. So to create the area light, if I was to turn that guy off, is just go up here to light or create as well, light. And you've got light, spotlight, target light, area light, a few different lights. Um, some of these aren't gonna show up in your version if you're on Cinema 4D light, but uh, area light is there. So there it is, I just raised it up here and then I just rotated it. I don't think you even have to rotate. I always seem to think that, you know, the light has to face the object, but that's the same look as with it. Well, it's slightly different. So there's a dark line. So rotate the light. It's essentially just a big square that just lights your scene, right? So if I jump out of here, there's the top view and there's my square. I can actually uh, drag the sides out like so and make it a much bigger light. And it does change the look of, you know, my scene here. It's a much, a uh, lot more highlight uh, specular going on on the image, on the block. So I'll go back to how it was. There it is. And at this point, all I had to do then was just animate my cube moving up, right? And that's just under coordinates. I set a keyframe for Y. I drug it down somewhere in here, clicked, there's the keyframe, went to the end of my timeline, and because the light was sitting right here, I just drug the cube right below the light. And that gives the illusion because it's so close to the light, it's not being lit, or you can just barely see it. So it almost looks like it kind of fades out, right? So if I play this, there's my animation. And I talked about this in the week that we talked about form, where you can right click on this animation show F curve. Uh, Cinema 4D defaults to the spleen with the keyframes. And I just want this to be linear because I am looping it. And I just wanted a constant motion right of the boxes. If we go back to that loop. I mean, you see here the boxes, they're not starting slow and then moving up and then slowing down. It's just a constant rate of speed, right? So I want that in Cinema 4D. So I just highlight both keys and I click on linear right here. 
So if I play it now, just a linear move from bottom to top. The last thing I had to do was add a tag, which we've talked about in one of the lessons this week, actually. Uh, adding, We talked about adding an external compositing tag. Well, this time, all I'm doing to this cube is I am adding a Cinema 4D tag display. And what a display tag does is if I click on these, I can turn these on and I'm gonna turn on visibility. That's about the only one I ever really uh, do much with. Uh, sometimes I do use an enhanced OpenGL, um, but most of them it's visibility. And this is just like a fade in and out. So I can set this to zero. You can't see it. I can set a keyframe and then I can move forward in my timeline to maybe somewhere in here and say at this point, it's 100% opaque, and I set another keyframe. And what I found, I don't know if there's a workaround, there's probably a workaround to this, but because there is a uh, display tag here, when we're working in the viewport, at least with the uh, Cinema 4D uh, basic render, you can't see the object until the first frame passed a zero value, which is kind of strange, but if I Render this like you're seeing here, it's not on. It's starting to fade on. Fading on more. And then here it is at 100%. And then I think I went a couple of keys uh, forward and I set another keyframe at zero, 100%. And then went to the end and said, okay, we're back to zero. And by doing those very few simple things, I got my default uh, render, which was this guy right here, if I render this out. So here he is fading in, and that light's sitting right there, so it kinda looks like it's fading out, but it's it's fading out, and it's also the light, it's getting so close to the light that it's getting darker at the same time. And then I went in and I changed it to add, so that there was some transparency. Then I looped these, so that they're every 12 frames. And that's what it looks like here. If I change these back to normal, it's not quite as interesting. There's the normal mode. Not as cool, but with add, much more interesting. And then the very last step in After Effects is I created a new adjustment layer and I added some effects. And those effects are right here. Of course, I started with my chroma warp, subtle warp. Very subtle effect. You can you know see it mostly on the edges here. So I turned that on. I did a very soft glow, which is right here in the middle. I also added some noise from After Effects. This is built-in noise. It's uh, set to 5% noise, very low value. So off, on. You probably can't even see it on the screen that you're watching, but without and with, and you can really see it in the edges over in here and here. And then the final effect I added was a third-party plugin that I use quite a bit of. It's called uh, Frisch Lift Curves. And it's, um, it's a curves plugin that's just very powerful to use. I've used this guy for years. Um, I can't remember how much this guy costs. I don't remember it being very cheap, but it's worth it for the power of editing curves inside of After Effects. So I added that. And it's a very subtle effect here as well, just boosting up some of the the darkness of the shot which i tend to produce shots that are very dark and i a lot of times have to boost uh the levels well you could have easily done this with the curves that's built into after effects and in fact uh, the newer version of after effects has some really powerful curves adjustments built into the lumetri uh, color correction plugin so that's definitely worth checking out it's very cool uh power in the curves plug in there. So that's it. That's how I created uh, this pretty cool loop here. Turn this back on and just show you one more time. That's my stacked boxes loop that I posted up on Instagram. Um, simple workflow. I put it together pretty quickly. Sometimes the best work that people respond to is the stuff that just gets thrown together very quickly 
and you don't have to think a lot about it. Sometimes, like me personally, I over tend to overthink my designs, and by the time I've reworked them and reworked them, they're not as interesting anymore. So uh, glad you guys found this one cool, and uh, hopefully you got something out of this little bonus video about how I used repetition to create stacking boxes. That's all I got for you today. Talk to you real soon. See you guys.